Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and today we are doing our quarterback ranking predictions, and it's currently Sunday, like three hours, you guys can see the time, it's like three hours before games start, so I'm trying to get these videos in, couldn't do them yesterday, I was kind of busy, I was just doing stuff, and uh, so yeah, uh, I know the Vikings are playing right now, but frick that, that's tough, um, they're in freaking London, so that's not my fault, um, but anyways, so first up for our quarterback rankings, we got Jacoby Brissett, who we haven't been doing, um, but I found a new tier list, so we're going to be doing that. I totally didn't look up images for Jacoby Brissett because I didn't know what he looked like. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. Anyways, uh, and three games played, he is 61 for 92, 66% completion percentage, 596 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception, uh, leading his team to... Two wins, I believe. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think we throw him ahead of Justin Fields. Ahead of Justin Fields. Probably ahead of Marcus Mariota. Um, that's that's probably about it. That's probably about it. Just for now. Just for now. Because I haven't really been ranking him. So, yeah. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. I really do hate Trevor Lawrence. But I think we are going to have to move him up this video. He's been playing really well. And I hate to say it, but we're going to have to move him up here. Um, so passing, 77 for 111, 69% completion percentage, 772 yards, 6 touchdowns, and an interception. And I mean, that's just, I mean, I, he's just better. He's just better. I think we throw him ahead of Davis Mills, throw him ahead of Kyler Murray, throw him ahead of Jameis Winston. I think we're going to stop right there. We're throwing him up a long way. But he has shown that he can be good throughout every game that he's played. And so, I mean, three games consistently doing good. I mean, I can't I can't just leave him like that. Um, that's probably going to be the biggest shift we see in this video. So, yeah. Um, but next up, we got Justin Fields. 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 Um, he is not looking great. We're probably not going to move him up. Um, 23 for 46, 51% completion percentage, 297 yards, two touchdowns, and four interceptions. I mean, there's nobody that I can move him behind, but uh, there's nobody that I can move him ahead either. <laughs> so, we're just going to leave him at 32nd. Uh, so yeah, oh, did I show you guys this? Hold on, we got to get the thumbnail. I, for I forgot if I... If this was on here or not, but thumbnail. Okay. Anyways, um, so yeah, just hasn't been playing good. Uh, the team hasn't really looked good. I, I guess they they did beat the Texans, but he threw a terrible interception to uh, Petre or whatever. However you pronounce his last name is a safety for the Texans rookie, and I don't know. He just hasn't looked good. His team hasn't looked all too great. I mean, they've been winning games. They're like two and one right now, but still. Um, next up, we got Marcus Mariota, and they finally won a game this week. I mean, can you freaking believe it? They're like the best team in the NFL. They're 1-2 and two now. They beat the Seahawks. They're better than freaking Geno Smith. Um, but anyways, uh, he's not looking too good. Uh, 50 for 79, 63% completion percentage, 640 yards, 3 touchdowns, and 3 interceptions. And those stats are not good enough for me to move past anybody. When you have th when you have equivalent touchdowns to interceptions, that's not what you're looking for. Um, and especially with the 63% completion percentage, I mean, we just, no. I, I think I'm, I'm not moving him up. He is on the Falcons. I do love you, Marcus, but come on now. Uh, next up, we got Jacoby Brissett. Who, we already did Jacoby Brissett. My bad. My, we got Geno Smith. Geno Smith, who has been playing a little bit better than I expected, but still not great. Uh, 79 for 102, 77% completion percentage, 717 yards, and four touchdowns and two interceptions. Those stats are absolutely amazing. However, the two interceptions uh, to four touchdowns is just not that crazy. I still do like him. I think he's playing well, but... 
I'm going to have to see a couple more games from him um, without those interceptions. I just need him to get, get ahead in that. I mean, I know he is like – he – okay, what happened here? They lost to the 49ers. They lost to, they're one and two. I don't think I can move him up too high. Um, but maybe uh, later in the season, if he can just score more touchdowns and interceptions, he'll be moving up. But with the way that the people ahead of him have been playing, I don't think I can necessarily move him up. Next up, we got freaking Jared Goofball. And oh my gosh, he has been playing absolutely amazing this season. I mean, like, absolutely crazy. 68 for 112, 58% completion percentage. No, that's not good. Um, however, 746 yards, 7 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. Uh, one of those interceptions came from late in the game. He rolled out of the pocket and chucked one downfield. Alexa, stop. Well, that was weird. Um. Anyways, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Um, one of those interceptions uh, was really bad interception. It's like it was like first down, and then she just, or I mean, he just threw the ball up, and it got picked to lose the game. So that wasn't very good. But still, seven touchdowns, two interceptions, and 748 yards is not bad. I'm going to throw him ahead of Kyler Murray, ahead of Jameis Winston, ahead of Jared Goff, ahead of Ryan Tannehill, ahead of Zach Wilson because he hasn't even played a game yet. I mean, he's looking really good. I mean, his completion, his completion percentage could be a bit higher. But, I mean, I, I really liked what I've seen from him. Seven touchdowns from Jared Goofball. To two interceptions. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Next up, we got Davis Mills. And let's see what he can do. Jared Goff is probably the biggest shocker here. Um, But next up, we got Davis Mills. 62 for 107. 58% completion percentage. 682 yards. Three touchdowns and two interceptions. That's good enough to move behind uh, Geno Smith. Jacoby Brissett, what was he doing? He had, what was Jacoby Brissett's stats? Not better than Davis Mills. Uh, so, yeah, he's not looking too great. Uh, he is leading his team to some close games, but that's mainly his defense. Um, I mean, he's putting up some points. I like how I've, I like how the Texans have played, um, and I'm really excited for their future. I'm really excited for Davis Mills' future just as of right now. He's not playing the greatest football um, so, yeah. Uh, next up, we got Kyler Murray. Let's see what he's doing today. Probably playing Call of Duty. It's a pregame ritual. Um, anyways, 90 for 141, 63% completion percentage, 784 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. That's enough to move him ahead of Jameis Winston for me. Not enough to move him ahead of any of these other guys, really. Um, I don't know. We'll look at the rushing yards. Can I, 12, 65 rushing yards. Interesting. Yeah, freak the rushing yards. Why am I even looking at the rushing yards? Freak the rushing yards. Um, but yeah, I mean, just been kind of mediocre. Um, not worth the contract that he's getting. And I'm a little biased towards Kyler Murray because I just, I just don't like him. Don't like his style as a quarterback. Don't necessarily like him. Um, so I might be a little biased here, but that that's tough. I'm not moving him higher. Okay, next up we got Jameis Winston. And let's see what he's doing. He hasn't been looking too great. Definitely has not been looking too great. Um, he's going back to his old form. And, man, I was really excited with him. When he had Sean Payton, 14 touchdowns, 3 interceptions. And now he's just, he, he's going back to his Buccaneers form, and I don't like that for him. Um, but anyway, 73 completions for 116 um, attempts. I, I, I said that wrong, but I don't know what I said. Um, 63% completion percentage, 858 yards, 4 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. 
And me personally, I'm not going to take that from my quarterback. So we're going to move him up here. Um, yeah, that's just not good. Four touchdowns and five interceptions is not the way to play quarterback Jameis Winston. I'm sorry, man. I was really excited for him last year um, until he got hurt. I think he was really good with Sean Payton. I think Sean Payton was really good with him. And then Sean Payton's gone now, and he just he's just going back to his old form. I thought he was finally changed. I was like, oh, he's going to be so good. And then and I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. But next up, we got Ryan Tannehill, and let's see what he's doing. Okay, so he's not looking great either. Bro, he really ruined me, man. I was so high on him coming into the season, but he's 50 for 80, 62% completion percentage, 647 yards, three touchdowns, and three interceptions. And that's not better than Trevor Lawrence. That's not better than Kyler Murray. That's not better than Geno Smith. I think I'll keep him ahead of Davis Mills. But he's just, I don't know. He's not hes not looking good. He's not looking good. Um, but we'll see what's happening. We'll see what happens. Um, next up, we got Zach Wilson, who hasn't played, so we'll just leave him there. Um, yeah, I guess we will just leave him there. Anyways, okay, next up, we got Jimmy Garoppolo. How did he play in his one game? Actually, he's had two games. My bad. My bad. Um, didn't look great. Didn't look great last week. Um, 31 for 50, 62% completion percentage, 365 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Did not look great last week. Um, put up 10 points. Gave the Seahawks a safety. They ended up losing by one point. So, I, you know, it kind of difficult. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't want to move him back too far. I still think he has potential. Um, he just... He, he had a bad game. He had a bad game. But I think he can do better. Still really excited for Jimmy Garoppolo. I think we'll still leave him where he is. Even though his stats may not be better than some of these players, we're going to leave him where he is. But Trevor Lawrence, go ahead as freaking Zach Wilson. I don't, I don't like seeing that. Okay. Even though I did love Zach Wilson, but freaking Trevor Lawrence, freaky. Um. Anyways, next up we got Carson Wentz, and let's see what he's doing. I know he had a good first couple of games, and yeah, he's looking pretty good. Eighty-two for hundred thirty, sixty-three percent completion percentage, eight hundred sixty-one yards, seven touchdowns, and three interceptions. And those stats are amazing. However, he's only won one game. Put up eight points against the Eagles, uh, twenty-two points against the Jaguars, and who did he beat? Twenty. He put up twenty-eight points against the Jaguars. That's who he beat, and then twenty-seven against the Lions. And I mean, that's not bad. His stats aren't bad. I I don't think I can move him. I mean, I. I mean, he's not winning games, but he has the same stats as Patrick Mahomes. So like. What do I even do about that? <laughs> I mean, come on now. It, I mean, Patrick Mahomes probably has a little bit better stats. But, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. He's putting up points. His defense isn't really working for him. So, yeah. they haven't. Ha the defense hasn't had a game under 24 points. Or, no, under 22 points so far. My bad. My bad. Um. Anyways, so we're going to move on. Maybe we move him up if some players have a bad game. <coughs> Mac Jones. <coughs> Um, something got into me, man. Um, but Mac Jones, freak you, man. Freak you. What? When is he gonna play? Is he gonna play next week? I don't know. He's freaking hurt. But gosh dang it, Mac Jones. 64 for 97, 66% completion percentage, 786 yards, and we might as well stop there, because the rest is freaking horrific. Two touchdowns and five interceptions for Mac. Through like three picks against whoever he played last week. I think it was the Ravens. Got hurt. I mean, he's lucky he got hurt. He might have thrown four more. I mean, holy Mac Jones. I was so high on you coming into the season. So high on you coming into the season. And this is the performance that you put up. This. 
I mean, dang it, man. Dang it. Um, I still do believe in you. I still do believe in you, Mac. But, behind Zach Wilson, behind you, we're going to have to throw you back here. Because... You can come back. I mean, I still think you're a great quarterback, and you could, well, you, you, you could be you could be above Geno Smith. Could you be above Kyler Murray? You could beat out Kyler Murray, potentially. Potentially. Okay, we'll leave you in B tier. But we're chucking you back a couple. Um, Mac Jones, really excited for you coming into the season, and now you're just blowing it. I mean, I mean, gosh. I, 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 I forgot what I was going to say, but... Man. So, yeah. I mean, you could have a great rest of the season, but you can't come back from two touchdowns and five interceptions. So, it's going to be hard to do that. Um, So, we'll just leave you back there. I don't want to put you down too far because you could still come back and still have a great season and win games. Win games. Winning games is huge. Uh, but when you throw two touchdowns, five interceptions, and you're not winning games, I can't give you too much. Um, But next up, we got Trevor Lawrence. Never mind. We already did Trevor Lawrence. Next up, we got... Mitchell Trubisky, who I was really high on coming into the season. Does nobody search up Mitchell Trubisky? He was like the last player to pop up. Um, Really high on him coming into the season, but I don't think his offensive coordinator is very good, Um, and he's not playing exactly how I'd like him to play. But uh, 62 for 103, 60% completion percentage. 569 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. And that's not great. That's not great. Um, I think we'll throw you back here with Mac Jones. Um, I do. I mean, I f- he always gets a bad coach. Always gets a bad coach, man. Matt freaking Can- Canada or Canada or whatever the frick his name is. Not looking good. He, bitch, but Mitchell Trubisky's not looking good either. So, I mean... I don't know. I don't know whether to blame it on the coaches or him. <laughs> I don't I don't know, but we are going to throw him back a couple cuz he hasn't looked great and hasn't been winning too many games. Beat the Bengals. Lost to the Browns. And did he win or lose against the Patriots? He might he might be 2 and 1. He might be 2 and 1. My bad. My bad. But uh next up we got Danny Dimes. How do you spell Daniel Jones? No, I don't want to freaking highlight it. I want to move. Daniel Jones, New York Giants. Okay. So, did he win last week? If it'll load the game log, maybe I could tell you guys. No. Lost to freaking Cooper Rush. My bad. Um, Put up 16 points. But Daniel Jones is not looking bad. The Giants are not looking bad. However, his stats do look kind of bad. 59 for 92, 64% completion percentage, 560 yards, three touchdowns and two interceptions. And that's not great, but he is winning games. And so we can't we can't hate him. We can't hate him. I mean, maybe he's not better than Carson Wentz. Maybe he's not better than Jimmy Garoppolo. Maybe he's not better than these guys. Maybe Mr. Trubisky. Kind of, kind of interesting here, but this is this is a lot of movement. This is like the most movement I think we've had now that we're in week three and finally getting to see some players. Anyways, um, realistically, I think Trevor Lawrence could finish ahead of ahead of Jared Goff. And Jimmy Garoppolo with the way he's playing right now. Anyways, um Who do we got next? We got freaking Lamar Jackson. I was gonna say something about Daniel Jones, but I forgot, so we'll just move on. Lamar Jackson. Not the corner from freaking Chicago. Uh has been playing great. He has been playing absolutely amazing. And Super electric. I mean, 56 for 88, 63% completion percentage, 750 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. And then let's look at the rushing yards. 243 yards, 2 touchdowns. I mean, that's that's crazy. 
I mean, absolutely amazing stats. I think that's enough to throw him ahead of Tua because he's hurt. We throw him ahead of Dak because he's freaking hurt. We're going to throw Dak down. Frick you, Dak. Cooper Rush is doing better than you. Dak, you suck. You just, you're going way down here, Dak. You just, you know, go to F tier, bro. Cooper Rush is doing better than you. Um, but yeah, Lamar Jackson looking great. I think we throw him ahead of Matt Ryan with how he's been playing. Ahead of Derek Carr. Ahead of Baker. Ahead of Jalen Hurts. Ahead of Matthew Stafford. Ahead of Russell Wilson. Ahead of Justin Herbert because now he's hurt. Ahead of Kirk Cousins because he's kind of, he's just kind of decent. Um, but man, okay. You know, I was, I was thinking, you know, Lamar Jackson, you know, he's a running quarterback. Can't really throw the ball. You know, defenses are going to figure him out this year. No, bro. Ten touchdowns to two interceptions. He has proved himself that he can throw the ball this year. I will tell you what. I know his receivers aren't making some plays for him, but holy, he is making plays this year, and you can't knock him for that. I mean, I had him down in B tier because I was like, okay, he's going to be kind of mid this year. You know, defenses... They kind of understand his game. And then just, what the frick happened? <laughs> Lamar Jackson just came out of the offseason. It was like, I don't need legs no more. And he's just freaking taken off. I think we might even throw him ahead of Joseph. I mean, he is playing S-tier level right now. I'll have to see one more week from him and one more week from Joseph. But he might be ahead of Joseph by the end of this season. And that's a lot from what I had him at the start. Uh, but th this video, probably the biggest movement we have had. Um, but we're in week three now. We get to kind of see more of how players are looking. Um, to a talk of a low. Injured. Got injured. I don't. Is he cleared for today? Is he out? Or is he cleared? He's probably is freaking cleared. I mean, who, who's I don't know who's freaking expecting inspecting him. Um, but eighty four, one hundred fifteen, sixty nine percent completion percentage, a thousand yards, eight touchdowns, and three interceptions. Playing absolutely amazing right now. I think that's enough to throw him ahead of Matt Ryan, ahead of Derek Carr, ahead of Baker Mayfield. Um, I'm not gonna throw him ahead of Jalen Hurts or anybody right now. He may have better stats, but he is coming off of some head injuries. And I don't think he's going to continue playing at this level for the rest of the season now that he's been kind of banged up a little bit. I don't think he'll be bad. Don't get me wrong. I still think he's a great player. But remember, these are rankings for the end of the season. And so I don't think I can throw him that far uh, up yet. Yet. I mean, two is playing great right now. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Um, but next up, we got Matty Ice. And Matt Ryan, man, you have been not playing well, they might as well put Matt Ryan from the freaking Celtics, or the Los Angeles Lakers, he had a Celtics jersey on, but he's from the Lakers, okay, Matt Ryan, I mean, man, man, 64% completion percentage, 770 yards, three touchdowns, and four interceptions, I still think he's gonna finish pretty high, we'll have him ahead of Jimmy Garoppolo, um, Obviously, his stats are worse than freaking Geno Smith, but I do think that he can. I do think that he can bounce back from this, um, even though he's not playing amazing right now. Uh, I still do think that he can bounce back. Um, and remember, these are rankings for what I think is going to happen by the end of the year. Uh, so some stuff might change before this video ends. Like Carson Wentz, I don't know if he's going to be playing at that level all year. Um, but I don't know, Mike and Jared Goff, you know, we, we just, we don't know. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> what's next? What's next? Derek Carr. No, I had to look up how to spell his name the other day. What if I just typed in Carr? Derek Carr. He pops up. It's that simple. I can just do that every time. Okay, 73 for 120, 60% completion percentage, 850 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions. You know, not great with the receiving core that he has. 
really not good. I mean, he has Devontae Adams. He has Hunter Renfro. He has Darren Waller. He has a running game. I mean, not exactly what I was expecting. I mean, I don't think that Carson Wentz is a better player than Derek Carr, though. I just can't say that. Um, we might throw Trevor Lawrence ahead of him. We might do that, potentially. Um, frick you, Carson Wentz. Um, I don't think I throw him behind Matt Ryan. I don't throw him behind any of these other guys. I think he will bounce back and be a, a lot better than what he's playing right now. But... As of right now, not playing all too well, and his team is 0-3. So, I mean, it's not it's not looking good. And, I mean, I know some things are happening that aren't his fault, but still. I mean, it's it's not looking good. Um, but next up, we got Baker Mayfield. And let's see what he's doing. All right, 12 for 40. 12 for 40? Oh, that's rushing. My bad. 42 for 81, 51% completion percentage, 550 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. That's not exactly what I was looking from him, looking for from him. I think we'll throw him behind Matt Ryan. Do we throw him behind Matt Ryan? I think we throw him ahead of Matt Ryan. Do we throw him ahead of Derek Carr, though? I don't know. I don't know. What what are the Panthers looking like? They're one and two. Did they win their latest game? Yes, they did. Um, I don't know, man. Their team has not been looking great, losing every game by like two points. And I can't really blame that on Baker Mayfield, but he is throwing for fifty percent completion percentages. That's that's not great. I understand he's getting used to a new playbook, but I mean, come on now. Um, what do I want to do with Baker Mayfield? I don't think he's going to be better than Derek Carr. I think he might be better than Matt Ryan and better than some of these players. I think I think that's where we'll leave him. I don't know. I think, I don't know. Sometimes I just mess myself up with how much I move some people and then not moving other people enough. But I don't, I don't know, man. But next up, we got Jalen Hurts. So let's look at how he's doing. Okay, 66 for 98, 67% completion percentage, 916 yards, four touchdowns, and an interception. That's enough to move him ahead of him, ahead of him, and ahead of him now that he's hurt. Jalen Hurts, he's winning games. He's playing decent. Uh, decent, never mind, not decent. He's playing good. Um, 3-0, 38, 24, 24. That's how, many, that's how much points he's putting up. I mean... If you are putting up, hold on. You're not frick that. I'm not doing anything. With that. Um, but that's just that's a lot of points. <laughs> um, but he's looking really good. Uh, his team's looking really good. I haven't necessarily watched his games, uh, so I can't really say they look really good. But they're playing really well, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for Jalen Hurts. I was really high on him coming into the season. Really high on the Eagles coming into the season, and he's proving me right right now. And I'm super excited for him. And what he can do. Um, but next up, we got Matthew Stafford. And Matthew Stafford, I really do not watch the Rams whatsoever. So I have no idea what this is going to look like here. Let's see. 74 for 102. 72% completion percentage. 761 yards. Four touchdowns. And five interceptions. I mean... What do I even do about that? How do you have four touchdowns? Perfect stats. Absolutely amazing stats. And then five interceptions. I mean, how do you blow it? Like, a 72% completion percentage. Bro would have a 90 completion percentage if the defense was on his team. Like, it doesn't make sense, Matthew Stafford. <laughs> um, Gosh, man. I mean, he's playing great. But... I don't know. I really hate Trevor Lawrence being in freaking A tier. I hate Trevor Lawrence so freaking much. But he has so much potential. Six touchdowns and one interception. He has so much potential as a second-year player. And I just I can't do it to him. But I really do hate him. 
Um, but anyways, so I think we'll leave Matthew Stafford right there. I, th- I think he can bounce back, but man, if he plays bad again in week four, he's going way down. Um, but next up, we got Russell Wilson. Let's see how he's playing. I know his team hasn't been doing, been doing amazing. Put up 11 points last game. Two of those points was from Jimmy Garoppolo. So, I don't know what's going on. Uh, 63 for 60% completion percentage, 743 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. And that that's not that's not top 10 worthy stats. You're you don't have top 10 worthy stats. You guys both suck. I mean, I think Matthew. St- I don't know, man. Russell Wilson's not playing great. But like, how far do I really want to move Russell Wilson back? I don't know, man. I don't know. This week three has been very, has been very interesting. I'll tell you what. Like at these these three games that they've played, very interesting, very interesting. But we're gonna go look at um Kirk Cousins. I mean, everything could change from what's happening right now. I mean, Lamar Jackson could freaking die. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. Um, but 74 for 119, 62% completion percentage, 758 yards, five touchdowns, and three interceptions. And can you guys guess who that player is? Kirk Cousins. Um, so yeah, not the greatest stats. I still think he'll finish pretty high. I still think he'll finish pretty high. Um, maybe behind Tua, maybe behind Trevor. Does that keep him in the top 10? If Kirk Cousins isn't top 10, we're moving this back up. One, four, four. Ten. Yes, Kirk Cousins. Go, Kirk. Go, Kirk. Um, But anyways, next up, I don't have much to say about Kirk Cousins. I haven't really been watching their games, and right now they're playing in London, so I don't even get to watch their games today. Um, But next up, we got Joseph Lee Burrell, who is playing absolutely dog right now. I mean, absolutely terrible. I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to say that, but like, just he's like what one and one and two right now. He's one. He's two and two right now. Oh yeah, he played Thursday. My bad. Um, but anyways, a hundred for one hundred fifty-six, sixty-four percent completion percentage, a hundred or a thousand one hundred yards, eight touchdowns, and four interceptions. And I think he's bouncing back from that Steelers game. He threw, like, what, three interceptions in that game? I don't want to take him out of S tier. I don't want to take him out of S tier. I still think he's playing really well. And I think he, he can definitely bounce back and lead his team back. I mean, he lost those first two games, and now he's 2-0 and without those first two games and hasn't thrown an interception since those first two games. So I like the way that he's playing right now. Really excited for him bouncing back here. Um, I think we'll keep him in S tier with the way that it's going right now. Next up, we got Thomas Brady, who is not playing all that good. I mean, I, I was, you know, I was on him. I was like, okay, you know, not the greatest stats, but he's winning games. And then he lost with a freaking delay of game on a two-point conversion. How do you do that, Thomas? But 67 for 130, 65% completion percentage, 673 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. This team is currently like two and one right now, um. So yeah, lost to the Packers in a weird way. Led a game-winning drive, but his offense is just not putting up points. I mean, not putting up points. I mean, fourteen, twenty, nineteen. All right, and wait, am I bad? Nineteen, twenty, twelve. I mean, that's just that's not good. That's not good. You, your defense holds the Packers to 14 points, and you still lose. How do you let that happen, Thomas? I mean, that's not good. I think we'll throw him behind Joe Burrow, even though Joe Burrow's not playing well right now. I don't want to take him out of S tier, but his offense is just not producing. And so I don't I don't know what to do. I still think he'll be in the freaking NFC Championship, but I just his offense isn't scoring, and I don't I don't know what to say about that. But anyways, next up we got Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, Aaron, 
Pick Rogers. Pull up Aaron Rodgers. It doesn't matter if I spell it wrong. How do you spell it then? You tell me how to spell it. Frick it. Rogers. A A Ron. My bad. My bad. It's A A Ron. Frick that crap. Um, but 62 for 94, 72% completion percentage, 684 yards, four touchdowns, and two interceptions. He's looking pretty good. His team's two and one. Um, not going to move him back. Not going to move him up because these two players are definitely playing way better than him. But the two players behind him are definitely not playing as good as him. Except for maybe Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow has potential to take his spot. He's been playing really well in the last two games. But... I don't know, man. I really don't watch the Packers. I don't really have anything to say about Aaron Rodgers. But next up, we got the Chiefs. Or we got Patrick Mahomes, who's been playing absolutely amazing this season. Let's see what he's got here. Uh, 74 for 109, 67% completion percentage, 8 touchdowns, and 1 interception. And, I mean, that's MVP numbers. MVP numbers. Lamar Jackson, MVP numbers. Josh Allen. MVP numbers. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of players, a lot of quarterbacks playing really well right now. And as we get later into the season, obviously we're going to see the ones that are going to fall off. And we're going to see the ones that are going to rise to the top. And those will be the ones that win MVP. So, I don't know. It's really confusing right now. Like, Trevor Lawrence could just suck for the next 14 games. There's nothing I can do about it. He's in A tier right now. I mean, I can't, I can't move him back. Unless he played terrible in the next 14 games. But, like, if you throw... I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. Um, Patrick Mahomes has been playing really good. The Chiefs are, like, 3-0. and Never mind. They lost to the Colts, I'm pretty sure. Um, so that kind of sucked. But, you know, it's whatever. Patrick Mahomes is still playing great. Um... So we're going to move on to Josh Allen, my MVP pick for this year. And let's see what he's doing. Okay. 94 for 132, 71% completion percentage, 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. That's MVP numbers. Um, Definitely MVP numbers. I mean, we're keeping him up here. I'm not going to move him. And I don't think I'm going to move him for the rest of the season. I think we're going to keep my MVP pick the same. So if you guys are looking for a real Josh Allen pick, go somewhere else. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Um. So yeah, but Lamar Jackson definitely could sneak up there. I'm, I mean, he's playing great right now. I'm not gonna lie. We might even throw him in S tier right now. I think we will. Um. So then there's five players in S tier. That's that's really interesting, guys. Really interesting. Um. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking about these predictions. Or, I mean, rankings, but they're technically predictions, I guess, for how they're going to play for the rest of the season. I just don't know, man. I don't know. But I guess that's where we're going to leave it off. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I will see you guys next time.